wait, 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 wake up, fragrance fans, it's time that you listen good. You want to be the best smelling bro in your neighborhood. That's not easy, but it could be achievable. Your current lack of swagger isn't irretrievable. It's time you wore a cologne that's sophisticated, not one that's cheap or immature or that's overrated. You want to look and feel and smell like a grown-up. And if you don't get it's time that you own up. No, Mum, I'm doing a rap here, I'm recording. Um, can I have egg and chips, please? Yeah, cheers. Oh, I'll be down in a minute. I can understand the things most rappers say Because rapping is my thing and I do it every day I'm the number one rapper and my name is Dan I can rap more raps than Nando's can Jeremy Fragrance calls me up for advice I can't really help him but I try to be nice Back off haters, my cologne spray is loaded I won't allow my confidence to be eroded Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be having a look at some of the best rated fragrances Some of the raved about ones by famed perfume critic and writer Luca Turin in these two books, Perfumes, The Guide, the original, I think, 2008 edition, I think it was 2008, and the uh, new edition from 2018, both written in combination with his partner, Tanya Sanchez, but all these reviews actually are from the man himself, Luca Turin. He's one of the most famous writers on perfume in the world, arguably perhaps the most famous. And he is a real old school fragrance fan, but uh, someone with a huge knowledge of, of all manner of men's and women's fragrances. His tastes tie in to an extent with my own, so it would be an absolute thrill. Can we make this happen? Could we get Luca Turin to write a review of Gravitas Pour On, my own fragrance by the brand Norton & Wilson? That would be incredible. Uh, and I've, I have tried to get in contact with him. I'm going to keep trying, so I'll, I'll keep you posted on that, guys. Gravitas Pour On, by the way, is still in stock in the USA and Canada and the UK and EU. You can order it. It's all from one website. Link in, in the description, superb Fougere fragrance. I hope you guys can check that one out. So let's get stuck into this. I think we've got uh, something like eight fragrances. There are two books and you can find these easily online if you search Perfumes the Guide and they're really reasonably priced. It's nice, the reason I've done this list, you know, it's always nice to do a, a list video that's more popular than an individual fragrance review, but the seasonal top tens are so cliched and I, I do them too. But this is a different kind of list. It's someone else's opinions that generally tie in my, with my own. I've got all the fragrances I'm gonna talk about, really love them all and just something a little bit different outside of our YouTube little bubble of fragrance reviews. So different the way this guy writes about perfumes. You know, you never get a note listing. He never mentions the word hardly longevity or projection or performance that all the YouTubers bag on about. He doesn't need to tell us what season it's appropriate for, that kind of thing. It's kind of refreshing. Great holiday book if you're lucky enough to go on holiday this year. These kind of things would be a great page turner on your sun lounger. So guys, let's flip the camera angle. I'll show you the bottles and I'll discuss each fragrance. Okay guys, so let's get cracking and look at the eight great fragrances that Luca Turin also thinks are pretty good. A lot of them are five star ratings. That's a really a rare mark for him. He doesn't give that out lightly. So I'm gonna include a couple that are also uh, really good, I think, and that he clearly loves that he only gave four stars to as well. So first up, these are in random order, no particular order. Most of them from the first book, which I'll just show on camera. This is the older book, Perfumes the Guide. Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez first came out back in 2008. I'm just checking that as we speak by flicking through the pages of the book. Yes, it was 2008. Okay, so one that he really loved in this book and which I've just recently picked up a full bottle of for the first time. Very happy to have this in the collection. Invasion Barbar by Parfums. MDCI from Paris. There's my 75 mil uh, bottle there, which I've just picked up recently. So happy to have this one. A classic barbershop-ish fougere fragrance. Really a stunning, stunning scent. I'll give you the note listing for this one. The perfumer, by the way, Stephanie Bakouche. Top notes are grapefruit, bergamot, and violet leaf. In the middle, you've got thyme, cardamom, lavender, and ginger. And the base notes are patchouli, vanilla, and musk. Let's see what Mr. Turin actually says about this one. He was uh, really taken with this one. And of course, it's a modern take on a barbershop type fragrance. It came out in 2005. So I would probably describe this perhaps as something of a neo fougere fragrance. There's certainly a powdery aura about this one, a freshness in the opening, and a real quality about the ingredients. So Luca Trin gives this one the full five stars. His two word description, which he often gives at the top of the reviews, is spicy woody. And uh, I won't read the whole thing that he said, but he said, um, on first impression, Invasion Bar Bar had one of those majestic, woody, spicy, baritone top notes that usually make me cringe in anticipation that the impressive breadth will soon run out of cash and give way to a skeletal dry down. After 10 minutes, I uncurled my toes and relaxed. This thing was not done on the cheap. 
and is in fact one of the top two or three fragrances in this genre on the face of the earth. Now that is praise indeed. Clearly a huge fan of this one. I can't say I disagree. Lovely lavender, powdery notes, a bit of sweetness, some spice, and this sort of nod to the old school barbershop fragrance world. Superb stuff, bit expensive. Try it if you can, buy it if you can afford it and if you like it as much as myself and the great man, Luca Turin. Don't forget, if you'd like to join the Smelly Army Private Members Club over on Patreon, there's a link in the description to do that. It costs just $2 a month and you get an extra video from me every week. Plus, you get to watch everything I've already uploaded in there. We're building a really nice community, lots of interaction, and I'd love to see you in there. Moving on then, we're going to go for another one with a retro type of smell, but uh, this one literally comes from way back in the 20th century. It's Insonse from Givenchy. So a 1993 release Insonse from Givenchy, now sadly discontinued and very hard to find, regarded as one of the more adventurous, adventurous fragrances of the 1990s that perhaps people didn't get. The fragrance perfumer was Daniel Moliere. Notes are aldehydes, blackcurrant, lavender, mandarin orange, bergamot, lemon and basil, uh, and we also have magnolia, lily of the valley, or even lily of the valley, iris and fir. So it's an aromatic fougere fragrance actually in essence, but with added floral notes. Luca Turin was celebrating its apparent return in the book. I won't actually read any quotes, but he, he really rated it highly and said at the time he didn't quite get it when it came out, but returning to the reissue that I think they brought out in the, uh, the 2000s at some point in a slightly different bottle. Uh, he was absolutely delighted with it. He gave it the full five stars, I think, did he? Uh, yeah, it was a full five star rating. Oh, let's, let, let's check what he gave. I'm going to turn to the book. It's page 311, if you happen to be lucky enough to own this book. It's such a great book. It's really different to watching YouTube videos, and it's kind of refreshing. Yeah, he describes it as a masculine floral, five stars. In Sonse is back, he says. And Givenchy must be commended for bravely reissuing marvels from its distinguished past. He talks about a few other marvels, and uh, he says two things at the end here. It's blessed with two qualities that are the surest mark of a good masculine, melancholy and mystery. It will likely flop again. He's right. So buy it now before Givenchy changes its mind. So it did indeed uh, get discontinued again. Superb masculine floral, kind of a fougere fragrance with added florals, lovely citrus, a little bit of uh, black currant sweetness. I've described it as the smell of spring blossom embodied in a masculine fragrance, if that's possible. It really reminds me of the smell, or really more the feeling in the air when those first pink blossom leaves appear on the trees and you know springtime is a coming. Great, great fragrance. Check it out if you're lucky enough to be able to find it. Moving along then, the next one we're going to talk about, let's do this big heavy hitter. I, I've done another video like this actually a while back about his favourites, but for the most part, these are all new fragrances that I didn't mention in my first. I think I've done two videos about Luca Turin's favourite. I did wield a sample of this one in one of them, though, I think. L'Air de Desert Marocain from the uh, incredible Andy Tower, the Swiss artisanal perfumer and it's number two the first one he released was called la maroc pour elle this is supposed to, supposedly a slightly lightly lighter i should say more airy version of that apparently female fragrance which is entirely unisex in smell in my opinion so 2005 release the notes in this one we have coriander and cumin petty grain rock rose and jasmine cedar vetiver and ambergris. So the, the fragrance is intended to embody the smell or the aura that the air in the Moroccan desert might provide to the wearer. I think Luca Turin does a cracking job of uh, describing this one. And again, you know, it's so much more fun sometimes to read his descriptions than your standard note breakdowns and the slightly formulaic way that we YouTube reviewers tend to talk about fragrances. So I'll, I'll give you some of what he said. Uh, the sweet smell of amber the foundation of the classic perfume oriental has long been weighed down by vanilla and sandalwood, decorated with mulling spices, bolstered with musk, made come hither ready for its close-up, and we are quite used to it. But this is not Amber's first life. Perfume first meant through smoke. That's a true thing. Yeah, perfume. Think about it. F fumes. Smokes. Uh, named for fragrant materials burned to clear the air and therefore the spirit. Okay, blah, 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 etc., etc., etc. And at the end of this review, he says, 
Wear this fragrance and feel the cloudless sky rush far away above you. Lovely, very poetic descriptions. Uh, it's a superb fragrance with incense and smokiness, balanced with sort of airy light notes. Almost to me, a tiny kind of barbershop. People will probably say you're absolutely wrong, Mr. Smelly, but maybe a hint of lavender too for me. Uh, and maybe that's why I like it as I'm such a barbershop fan, but it's, it's an exotic fragrance but a very wearable one, and I love that stuff. Don't forget, if you're enjoying the video, please hit the subscribe button down there. If you're not already subscribed, then you won't miss any of my future videos about great smelling men's fragrances. Next up then, we're going for the classic French house of Guerlain. The fragrance in question, Eau de Guerlain, not much talked about on YouTube. I'm one of the few people who's mentioned it quite a few times in my videos. This was a 1974 release, perfumer being, of course, Jean-Paul Guerlain, and it's one of the classic citrus aromatics out there. There are quite a few in similar bottles from Guerlain, and this could be argued to be the best, and it, it kind of feels like Luca Turin feels that it is, because here is what he has to say about it. Uh, he gives it the full five stars. Again, it's in this first book, the one that looks like that, the 2008 version. He says that Eau de Guerlain is to citrus what the mandolin with its doubled up strings is to a guitar. It is as if, by some arcane miracle of perfumery, the ivory and green notes of citron and verbena have been made to sing in harmony with the jaunty lemon bergamot tune, exactly a major third on either side, giving the whole thing a ravishing, nostalgic tombra. Wonderful. Uh, and then he, uh, he concludes by saying, if you want citrus, there is simply nothing better out there. It is a superb, classic citrus aromatic fragrance with some herbal tones, uh, a woody undercurrent going through it, and a little bit more depth and character than some of the very light ones in similar bottles, such as Eau de Cologne Imperial or Eau de Fleur de Cedrat from Guerlain. Reasonably priced, niche quality to me, and if you're a citrus aromatic fan, I think I agree that there's not much better. There are other things that I think equal it, but nothing really massively beats Eau de Guerlain. Moving on then, let's go for something more modern. This one's actually not in either book, so I've cheated here. It, it came out, I think, after the most recent book was issued in 2018. It's Rassai Forts Colonia. Now, there's a, a website called Perfumes the Guide, which is effectively Luke Turin's blog, and this is one that he was sufficiently impressed by to give it a write-up. comes with rather nice uh, packaging like that and a very simple but nice design for the bottle itself. Rassai Fort, of course, is the man behind the brand Fort and & Manly. And strangely, this one appears on their website under the name just Rassai Fort. It's called Colonia, which of course means Cologne. Rassai Fort grew up in Turkey, or at least perhaps he visited Turkey. I think he grew up in Turkey. He's based in Australia now. Anyway, he designed this fragrance as a tribute to his grandfather, the, remembering the smell of his grandfather's cologne mixed perhaps with the lovely uh, floral notes, maybe citrus tones in the air of the Turkish countryside when he used to go for a walk with him. And, and this fragrance has a note listing as long as your arm. It's almost impossible to keep up with the note listing and uh, smell everything that's in it. Luca Turin on his website talks about a lovely combination of citrus and real iris, which he is really impressed by. And I definitely, it's weird that it's not actually a listed note iris in this fragrance, but it, it has that Diorom-esque iris note, but so much more, kind of green earthy tones, a little bit of sweetness and incense, really magical stuff. Comes in a funny little splash bottle like this, but uh, I, he didn't give a star rating, I don't think, because I don't think he does that on his blog, but I, I feel sure it would have been a four or five. It's really fantastic niche stuff. Rassai Fort Colonia, total, total modern classic, released I think in 2018 or 19. I'm a huge fan of that one as well as is Luca Turin. Okay, uh, this one surprised me. I didn't remember until I was researching for this video. Aqua de Palma Colonia Assoluta made it in the first book and it got a four star rating, so not quite the full five, but he certainly raved about it. So this one was a combined effort from Bertrand Duchefort and Jean-Claude Elena. Jean-Claude Elena, of course, did Terre d'Hermes. Uh, Bertrand Duchefort has done a ton of great stuff, including Penhaligon's Sartorial. The notes on this one are in the top, you've got bergamot and bitter orange and sweet orange. Uh, lemon verbena also, mid notes jasmine, vetiver, ylang ylang, cedar cardamom, pink pepper and paprika and the base notes patchouli, oak moss, white musk and resins. It's one of the greatest citrusy fragrances 
of course there are many from Aqua de Palma, but this is a truly beautiful one. Sort of an updated take for me on the slightly stuffy, old fashioned smelling original Colonia. So let's see what Mr. Turin says about this one. It's on page 72 of the original book, four star rating. He calls it a refined cologne. And he says, when you know that this fragrance was composed by Dutrich de Chafour and Eleanor, you wonder what such a dream team can do with a classical structure and how it compares with the Aqua de Palma Colonia. The answer is less citrus, less floral, and a far more interesting dry down in, dare I say it, a classic, classical fougere style. That's all he had to say. It is indeed a beautiful fragrance. It doesn't last or project as long as some of you might want from a fragrance, but it's delightful and elegant stuff. So I'm really pleased that I agree with the, the great man himself. Next up, we are going to go into the modern era. The only one actually from the second book. I wonder if you've heard of this one, guys. It's, it, guys, it's Creed Aventus. So the second book, 2018. Uh, credit to Tanya Sanchez as well, who is the co-author and writes a lot of the reviews, but it just so happens I've um, zeroed in on all, all the ones that he's written here. So of course this one, the most raved about fragrance on YouTube, I guess, in terms of niche fragrances, you've got bergamot, blackcurrant, pineapple, birchwood, patchouli, oak moss, ambergris, amongst other ingredients. A, a beautiful, fresh fragrance. Talk, people talk about different batch codes, all that kind of stuff. There's probably not much I need to add on this one, but let, I think it's more interesting to see what does Luca Turin say on page 59 of the second book, Perfumes the Guide, uh, the 2018 edition. He says this, four stars, citrus fougere, that's his two word description. The creed, creed seems to have receded somewhat lately. Its followers mellowing from unhinged loons to mere swivel-eyed fanatics. I have always been sceptical of Creed's patter, perfumers by appointment to a variety of dead people who can't demure, and less than impressed by many of their purportedly superior fragrances. Aventus is a hugely successful masculine and has, and has been described to me by otherwise sane women as irresistibly sexy, so a sniff on my part was in order. It turns out to be a very nice dry, fruity, sorry, citrus fruity with an impressive ability to radiate a warm, spicy aura all around. Good stuff. There you go. So Luca Turin likes Aventus. I think he said okay things about Bois de Portugal and Green Irish Tweed, but just sort of okay. And uh, quite dismissive, I remember, about some of the others. Millicene Imperial, I think he dismissed that as metallic citrus or something. Finally then, the last one on the list, one that I got a month or two ago, Le Troisième Homme de Caron, a classic fragrance from the French House of Caron, first released in 1985. Um, you could call it a fougère or an aromatic fougère. According to Fragrantica, this is a woody aromatic. The note listing, we have a bunch of citrus notes in the top, then you've got lavender, you also have clove, which is quite important in many people's description of this one, coriander, and your base notes of vetiver and oak moss are very typical for fragrances in, in the masculine world of that era. Let's find out what the man himself actually has to say about this fragrance. So you'll find this in the first book all the way back at five, page 526. Le Troisième Homme, he describes it as a jasmine fougère, weirdly, as I didn't notice that note and it's not listed. Uh, I shall cut to the end. He says, I've never smelled it on a man and wonder if I ever will. He, he smelled it on a lady, you see. Accidents of nature are for forgivable, but how many men can pull off deliberate prettiness? Buy it, even if you never put it on. So he, he smelled it on a lady and found it very, very mesmerizing and beautiful. Uh, I find it to be a very classical, masculine type of fragrance, so I don't really agree with his description entirely. It reminds me a bit of Bois de Portugal by Creed, one of my fragrances, my favorite fragrances. Beautiful kind of citrus opening, green notes, lavender, masculine woods, an old school vibe, but not quite so old school as to be not wearable today. Nice performance, you can pick it up for a great price. A stun up for me. So guys, let me know what you thought about that in the description, uh, sorry, not in the description, in the comments of the video, uh, because I think these books here, both of them are excellent. You can buy them. I've just knocked one over. Sorry. You can buy them, of course, pretty easily if you if you search on Google. Good prices and much more fun in in a way than just sitting there wading through YouTube videos. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.